Hardly a day passes without bad news for the Gillard government. Today, the Health Services Union's East Branch was raided by the New South Wales Police, where they caught a man trying to remove evidence. The union's general secretary is Michael Williamson, a former national president of the Labor Party. Shortly, I'll be speaking with the HSU's national secretary, Cathy Jackson. The other running sore for the government is the claim that the parliament's speaker, Peter Slipper, sexually harassed a male staffer and tried to defraud the Commonwealth. The Australian Federal Police have now launched a formal investigation into the allegations of fraud. The government believes the coalition had a hand in entrapping the speaker, but that's a faint glimmer in the gloom. And as Heather Hewitt reports, it's taking its toll on an already battered Prime Minister. Just another day in Labor politics. Police raid the Sydney headquarters of the Health Services Union as part of their investigation into claims of serious corruption dating back to the 1990s. We have recovered numerous uh, documents relevant to our investigation and we're also examining uh, computers within the office. I have major concerns, however, that uh, efforts have been made to interfere with information relevant to our investigation. Um, I don't dismiss the possibility of criminal charges arising from those efforts. Is what one would say... That possibility electric. is understood by the ABC to relate to this man, embattled Union today, Secretary and former no ALP National moment. President Michael Mind Williamson. Body. Is it a, a fact that uh, officers intercepted a bag of documents in a separate car park? Yes, that is correct. A bag of documents was intercepted this morning. Do you, what was are happening you suggesting, there? Are you suggesting the destruction of documents or the interference with witnesses? I won't uh, go into, into that with any more detail, only that I have concerns that uh, information relevant to the investigation may have been tampered with. Former union official and exiled Labor MP Craig Thompson, who's about to languish on the crossbenches in the federal parliament, immediately shot up his hand to say it was nothing to do with him. The police raids uh, are an unfortunate day for the union, but uh, these are issues for the union leadership, Catherine Jackson and Michael Williamson. That's just Craig Thompson being in fantasy land. The, the um, investigation goes back beyond... Um, the formation of HSU East, so the former state register organisation, which Craig Thompson was a part of. Can I make it absolutely clear I have not spoken to the police today or at any time in relation to these issues whatsoever. So quite clearly, this is not about me. The Prime Minister cannot wash her hands of this stinking, putrid mess. It's a mess that's engulfed the government because for so many months it refused to cut Craig Thompson adrift, while alleged misuse of union funds was investigated. The Prime Minister's belated intervention has not removed the stench. Still, today Labor did finally have the chance to go on the attack over another scandal causing it grief, the sidelining of the Speaker, Peter Slipper. My allegation is that Mr Pine is seeking to conceal the truth. Did you sexually harass James Ashley? A month before the sexual harassment claim was filed against Peter Slipper, the manager of opposition business, Christopher Pine, spent two hours with James Ashby, the staffer who lodged the complaint. Mr Pine later sought and got Mr Ashby's phone number. The first I knew about the federal court action was when I read about it in the News Limited papers. The, what the Labor Party is trying to do is create some fanciful political conspiracy, which, quite frankly, is deeply offensive. It's not just the Labor Party that suspects a set-up. It's a view shared by Archbishop John Hepworth, who leads a breakaway group of traditional Anglicans. There are clearly some elements of the sexual harassment claim that would make anybody with a reasonable, politically astute antennae wonder about the possibility of uh, entrapment. Peter Slipper is a priest in the traditional Anglican Communion. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21. He's seen here reading at the ecumenical service that began this parliamentary year. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. And being videoed by his accuser, James Ashby. The man who introduced the two is Liberal National Party member Rhys Reynolds. I have heard the rumours that it was potentially set up and it, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I, I would not have been a, a part of that. Anyone who knows me 
uh, knows that I would never do anything like that. Peter Slipper is also accused of defrauding the Commonwealth through his use of cab charges. The Australian Federal Police have confirmed that after evaluating the complaint, it does warrant further investigation. Mr Slipper's local paper has been following his expenses trail for two years. In the second half of 2009, Peter Slipper had a, uh, a travel and an office expense bill of $640,000. It was second only to the Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. Mark Furler wonders how Labor could not have foreseen trouble ahead in courting Mr Slipper. If, if uh, Julia Gillard had done a, a Google search on Peter Slipper on the Sunshine Coast Daily, she would have uh, had serious reservations about putting him into such a high office. The fact is it was a political gamble the Prime Minister and many of her team thought was worth taking at the time and it's backfired. Julia Gillard is now paying the price and Labor's disastrous showing in opinion polls has intensified the sense of panic in caucus ranks and the party machine this week despite what's being said publicly. I can assure you there's no one on the phones, no one's suggesting that they should be the alternative leader. Um, as far as I'm concerned, decisions were made, life moves on. Not quite. Desperate parties do desperate things, in the words of one senior ALP figure. And believe it or not, momentum is growing in the New South Wales and Queensland right factions, the Victorian left and even elements of the Victorian right to consider a shift back to Kevin Rudd to avoid an electoral tsunami. That's despite what was said all too publicly about him before the leadership ballot just two months ago. There's no doubt that Kevin has been engaging in undermining of the government for more than a year now. I think we need to get out of this idea that Kevin is a messiah. That animosity still runs deep, but the counterpoint doing the rounds is that a Rudd return would be seen by voters as the righting of a wrong. There's no formal plan about what to do next, as they all wait for some sort of bounce from next week's budget. But what's referred to as chattering by Julia Gillard's closest supporters is much more than that. Political editor Heather Ewart.